Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to this tutorial on how to create a C++ program for the Simpsons 38th rule. Now, Simpsons 38th rule is a rule for evaluating a definite integral and it is a numerical method and also it is also known by Simpsons second rule. So you might have heard it as Simpsons second rule or Simpsons 38th rule. Anyhow, so in this tutorial, what we'll be doing is we'll be going through the algorithm for this method, then we will be covering the flowchart, and then finally we will go through the program for this method. And in case you are already familiar with the algorithm or the flowchart and just want to see the C++ program, then you might want to skip ahead to the part of this video where I, you know, uh, tell about the C++, I explain the C++ program. Alright, so let's begin with the algorithm. So first of all, we need to define a function f of x in our program that we will need to integrate. All right, so we will do that. Then in the second step, we will get user inputs regarding the initial and the final limit of the integral that is a and b. a would be the initial limit and b would be the final limit and therefore a and b are the endpoints of the interval where we will be evaluating the definite integral. Then we need to have the number of sub-intervals or intervals in which we will, you know, uh, we will divide this interval a and b into the num into n number of sub-intervals. All right, and this number n should be not it should not be even, rather it should be a multiple of three. I'm sorry, I made a mistake uh, while I made this PDF, and. Uh, remember that in Simpson's one third rule, we need to have this number n as even. So I guess I just copied it from there. That's why there's this mistake. However, in the Simpson's 3h rule, it should be a multiple of 3 and not even. All right. So keep that in mind. Then we will calculate h, that is the width of each subinterval using the value of b, a, and n, that is the difference between b and a, and then we will divide that by n. So we will get the width of each and every interval all right so then we set the sum as zero and sum is a variable in which we will be calculating our integral so we set that by z uh, we set that as zero and then we begin a for loop which goes from one to n minus one now before we go through the rest of the algorithm let me just show you the actual formula for the simpsons rule which is um, like this um, here it is all right, so Simpson's 3h rule. Okay, so the formula for Simpson's 3h rule is shown here on the Wikipedia page of Simpson's rule, which says that uh, integral of f of x dx from the limit a to b is equal to 3h by 8 multiplied by the sum of f of x0 plus 3 f of x1 plus 3 f of x2 plus 2 uh, f of x3 plus 3 f of x4 and so on up till f of x n. So basically what we are doing is we um, calculate the value of function at x0, x1, x2 and x3 and so on up till x n. And what this x0, x1, x2 and x n are is x0 can be calculated from this formula that is x0 is equal to a plus 0 h therefore x0 is equal to a. Similarly x n is equal to b because x uh, n is equal to a plus n h which is in fact equal to b because uh, if you calculate it you will find that x n is equal to b so therefore what we are doing is we we add f of a then we add f of b and then uh, we perform all these additions and then finally multiply them by 3h by 8 so here in my algorithm what i've done is i began a for loop that goes from 1 to n minus 1 and I calculated x based on this formula x is equal to a plus i h all right and then I checked whether this i was a multiple of 3 or not if it was a multiple of 3 I multiplied by uh, that by 2 why because clearly you can see here that f of x3 is multiplied by 2, f of x6 is multiplied by 2 and so on. So whenever the index of x is a uh, multiple of 3, we multiply that f of x by 2. Otherwise, we multiply the rest of the, you know, uh, values by 3. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm checking whether i, which is the index, 
of x is a multiple of 3 or not. If it is, then we multiply that by 2 and add that to the sum. Um, else, we multiply that by 3 and add that to the sum. So just pause the video if you want and just uh, you know go through these steps and try to you know follow what is being done here. All right. So once I have calculated the sum and what this whole step is doing is it is calculating this part of the uh, you know equation. What it has done is it has calculated from since the loop started from 1 therefore it has calculated 3 f of x1 plus 3 f of x2 up till you know since it uh, ends at n minus 1 this loop ends at n minus 1 therefore it has calculated all the uh, it has calculated the sum up, up till f of x n minus 1. So we have calculated the middle part and now we just need to add f of x0 and f of xn which is basically f of a and f of b. So that is being done here in this step. Sum already has the sum of all the values in between and then we just add f of a and f of b and then finally what we need to do is we need to multiply this whole sum that we have right here with 3h by 8 and that's what I have done here. So that's the algorithm. I hope it wasn't too tough to follow. Then uh, the flowchart is pretty much the same. You get the values of a, b and n from the user and make sure that n is a multiple of 3. Then you set sum is equal to 0 then find out h which is the width in uh, width of the step interval then start a loop from 1 to n minus 1 calculate x1 x2 x3 and so on check whether um, this time uh, in the flow chart i have done a rather different thing here i check whether it was a multiple of 3 or not this time i'm checking whether it is a multiple of 2 or not which is wrong so we should I, again, I think I made a mistake right here while making this period. So this should be, we will be checking whether it is a multiple of 3 or not. Alright, so let me just add this comment right here. Um, it should be 3 and not 2. Alright, so we check whether, you know, the multi uh, whether the whether i is a multiple of 3 or not if it is a multiple of 3 then we multiply that by 2 and add it to the sum otherwise we multiply that by 3 and add it to the sum and similarly we keep on pro uh, repeating this process uh, and we keep on incrementing i and we keep on repeating this process until we have to, you know um, until i is equal to n minus 1 since the loop is for 1 to n minus 1 then finally we add f of a and f of b as well to the sum then we multiply them by again there is a mistake right here we multiply them by 3h by 8 all right so i guess i made these mistakes because i just uh, you know copied the simpsons one third rule pdf that i made and i just edited that so they are not very big mistakes just keep that in mind and also i'll be adding the links to this pdf and program in the description of this video and i may have uploaded this you know miss uh, this faulty version where there are a few mistakes so make sure that you don't use uh, these um, you follow the video and change these all right so now all right so now let's jump ahead to our program so i'll be running the program in linux and here is a program for the simpson 3h rule for evaluation of definite intervals so first of all, let me just include some standard libraries, the two header files. Then what I do here is I define a function f, which takes up the argument x. And you can see that the argument is also of the type double and the function is also of the type double. Because the argument can be anything, the function can return any value, we don't know what it would be, so it's best to use double. All right. Now, what this function is, it returns the equation or the function whose definite integral is to be calculated. All right. So just make sure that your function returns whatever equation or function you need to be uh, integrating. For example, here I am uh, trying to find out the integration of 1 by 1 plus x squared. So that's what I have defined the function to be. Then in the main part of the program, uh, these two lines are for setting the precision. You might want to ignore them if you want. 
Then here what I have done is I have defined two or declared two variables n and i then some more variables of the type double here and then what I do is I ask the user to enter the limits of integration the in initial limit is stored in the variable a the final limit is stored in the variable b and a and b are of the type double all right so it can be anything then um, we ask the user to enter the number of sub intervals that they want that is n and c I have asked the user to uh, enter a value that is a multiple of 3 so that's what is being done here the user is entering the number of sub intervals and I'm storing that in n and you can see that n is an int because the number of you know sub intervals should uh, is ha it has to be an integer it cannot be like point something it has to be a natural number so then what we have is we have we have created or declared to arrays of sizes n plus 1. Now why I have created these two arrays x and y is x stores the value of x that is from x0 to xn and y stores the value of f of x0, f of x1, f of x2 and so on up till f of xn. All right. Now why the sizes are n plus 1 because you might know that in C++ the uh, the array starts from the index 0 and goes on up till the index n minus 1. However, I already showed you that what we need is we need, you know, for x we need variables like x0 to xn. So it goes on from x0 to xn and similarly f of x also goes on from f of x0 to f of xn which makes it n plus 1. Right, from 1 to n we have n things and then we have this 0 index also so we have n plus 1 things therefore the sizes had to be you know n plus 1 for this x and y then simply I calculate the width of the sub intervals using the formula h is equal to b minus a by n then we start a for loop which is uh, for uh, getting the values of x0 x1 x2 x3 and so on and what I'm doing is I'm storing these values in the array x so from 0 to n this loop goes from i is equal to 0 to i is equal to n and with an increment of 1 and what it does it it calculates x0 equals to a plus 0 h which is x0 is equal to a then it calculates x1 is equal to a plus 1 h therefore that is x1 and so on up till xn and then it calculates y1 y0 y n y2 so on um, and which is equal to f of x0 f of x1 f of x2 and so on up till f of xn respectively so that is what is being done here now till now we haven't done anything we haven't used any part of the simpsons 3 8 algorithm and now what we are going to be doing this step is what basically the simpsons 3 8 algorithm is all about so now we uh, start a loop from 1 to n minus 1 this loop goes from 1 i equals to 1 to i equals to n minus 1 with an increment of 1 and we check whether the index is a multiple of 3 or not if it is a multiple of 3 then we multiply the term by 2 and add it to the sum else we multiply the term by 3 and add it to the sum and in with this step what we have done is we have calculated the sum of you know 3 f of x1 plus 3 f of x2 plus 2 of f of x3 and so on up till f of x n minus 1. Now in this step what we will do is we will you know uh, perform the rest of the integration that is we will multiply or uh, rather we will first of all add f of x0 and f of x n since y of 0 uh, holds f of x0 and y of n holds f of x n so I have used those values so what is does uh, this step does is it adds f of x0 and f of xn to the rest of the sum and then we multiply that by 3h by 8 and that is our integral by the method 3h uh, by Simpson 3 by 8 rule and that's it now and then finally we print the result uh, that is the integral variable and now let's jump ahead and run our program and see whether it works or not hopefully it works okay so just compile this 
and then run this. So let's say I enter the initial limit as 0 and I enter the final limit as 6 and we get, oh, all right, so I also need to enter the number of sub intervals and it should be a multiple of 3. Now I want to the accurate answer so let me just go ahead and enter 99 which is a big number. So okay, so I get the definite integral as 1.4056. Now is that correct or not? Now we know that the integral of 1 by 1 plus x squared is arc 10x, alright? Or you might call it tan inverse x. So what I did is I found out the value of arc 10x or arc 10 6 and it comes out to be 1.4056 up till the 4 digits. So that's um, um, where it is. So that's what I'm getting in my program 1.4056. So it is returning the correct result. So you might want to check out some other functions and try their uh, integral and it will be absolutely correct. And that's it for this video. If you have any other doubt or questions, don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below and I will make sure to answer all those. And also if you like this video then don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I post a lot of uh, C++ programs for numerical methods and other physics tutorials also and that's it thanks for watching and have a great day